Good day, clinical instructors. So today, I will be doing um, suctioning via oropharyngeal and nasopharyngeal airways. So the materials that we needed are the towel moisture pad, the um, wall, or the, our portable suction machine, our um, our sterile suction catheter, our clean sterile gloves, and also our white connector, our sterile um, disposable cat container, uh, our um, goggles, face shield. Also, we need to use is the sterile normal saline, and then also the sputum um, trap, sputum trap, and yang for catheter. After that is our assessment. So we need to assess for clinical signs of our patient, uh, indicating that our patient needs to be suctioned, such as the restlessness, the anxiety, the noisy respiration, the adventitious bed sounds, the change in uh, mental status of our patient, the skin color, the rate, the rhythm, and also the pattern of uh, respiration, the pulse rate, and um, rhythm, and also the decreased oxygen saturation. And then after that is the planning. So we need to um, identify our client. So I am Michelle Cruz, your nurse for today, and you are? Okay. Our um, client um, seems to be all right, or her mental status is okay. And then after that, we will determine the need for sanctioning. And then as what I've said, if our client um, is her nine, uh, her oxygen saturation is below 95 percent, then she needs to be sanctioned, sanctioned, and then so we will be sanctioning her, sanctioning her, and then after that we will explain what we are going to do to our patient. So I will be sanctioning you, okay? Via nasal or oral, nasal or oral pharyngeal, okay? Okay. After that, if you will adjust the bed or perform um hand hygiene first. So after performing our hand hygiene, we will now um adjust the bed to a comfortable um position. So we will now lower our side veils, and then if the patient is conscious, we will um, place the patient into a semi powdered position. And then after that, if, if our patient is unconscious, we will um, place our client to a lateral position facing us, and then after that, if we will now place uh, the towel or waterproof pad to the patient's chest. So that the secretions won't get into our patient's um, dress or body. And then after that, we will now um, um, adjust natin yung, we will adjust our um, suction to appropriate pressure. So for example, this is our suction machine. So our patient is um, children and so we will be using um, 80 to 100 cmHg of pressure. For example, that is we already um, adjust the suction. And after that, we will now put on our disposable or non sterile gloves. And then after that, if we will now um, open our sterile suction package using a septic technique. So this is for this is our um, suction catheter package or sterile package. So we will now open it using a septic technique. So for example, this is our sterile shield. So we will be opening our suction on uh, sterile catheter, and then we will put it in our 
first setting in the area. And then after that, we will now place a small amount of water-soluble um, lubricant to our um, suction catheter tip. For example, we already put it here. And then after that is, we will now um, increase the patient's um, supplemental oxygen if there is or present of um, oxygen or supplemental oxygen. And after that is, um, we will now be doing our implementation. So first is we will now put on our face mask or our face shield. So I will be... So uh, we will be now putting on face shield or face mask for protection so that the secretions of our clients uh, won't um, get passed to us. So we will now, or we can prevent um, cross-contamination. Because secretions may contains um, germs or organisms that can be, or viruses that can be passed through us. And to other patients. And then after that, if we will now, um, with dominant hand or gloves, we will now get our um, suction catheter with dominant hand. For example, our suction catheter is here. And then this is our suction tubing, we will now put it in our in our suction machine. Okay. So after that is we will now um for nasopharyngeal gently insert uh, the gently insert um the the catheter through the patient's nose trail. So five to six inches to reach to our to reach the pharynx. So for example, this is our client's nasopharyngeal. We will put it in our client's um, nose trail. Five to six inches into our client's um, pharynx. And then after that, um, our pharyngeal naman is, um, we will now put our catheter to the client's mouth. Three to four inches um, into the pharynx. Three to four inches into the pharynx. And then after that is, we will now um, apply our, after doing that, or before doing that, we need to apply first our lubricant so that um, our um, catheter, suction catheter will, um, will be easier to insert. So we will put lubricant to our catheter. Before inserting it into the, our client's nose trail and mouth. And then after that, if we will now, um, uh, re remove the oxygen delivery device if appropriate for then also do not apply suction catheter uh, as the catheter is inserted so we will um, release our finger into uh, to the white port and then after that we will now um, we will now hold the catheter between the thumb and the finger and then apply suction intermittently including the white port on the catheter with with um, the thumb of your um, non-dominant hand, uh, gently rotate as it um, being withdraw, withdrawn. So for example, uh, we already inserted our catheter into the client's nose. We will withdraw it using a uh, rotational motion or, or we will rotate it. Because if we, um, if we release it without rotating it, some secretions might not get or might not function by our suction, suction uh, portable suction. So we need a circular motion so that we can get all the secretions. And then also, we need to do it so that we won't damage the mucosa of our clients. And then also, we need, um, we need to always, we need to remember that we do not suction for more than 10 to 50 seconds at a time. Because what I said, we can, um, we can damage our client's mucosa. And then also it can be uncomfortable for our client. And then also we will now um, replace the oxygen delivery um, device of our client if, if there is. And then also we will now, um, using our non-dominant hand, uh, we will ask our client to drip, to, um, to breathe several, to breathe, um, to take deep breathing several times. So can you breathe for me like um, several times, deep breathing? Okay, after that, um, we will now flush our catheter with saline solution uh, so that 
we can um, see the effectiveness of our suction machine if it is still working. So, this is our saline. If it is suctioning, then it is good. It is um, our suction uh, um, catheter is working properly. And then after that, as we will now allow 30 seconds to 1 minute um, interval, every suction. So, and then after every suction, we need to encourage our patient to breathe deeply. And then after that, as we will now, um, when the suction is already complete, we need to remove our glove. We need to remove our gloves and then from the dominant hand to the dominant hand um, by pulling the catheter. And also we need to remove our face shield after that. So our So this is our reset panel here. Example, that is our reset panel, and then after that, is we will now remove our face mask. And then we will now perform hand hygiene, and then after that, we will now turn off our device, our portable suction machine, and then after that, we will now um, reposition our client to a comfortable position. So, are you comfortable in that position? Yes, our client is comfortable in that position. And then after that, is we will now do the uh, evaluation. So we need to reassess the respiratory status of our client, the respiratory rate, the effort, the oxygen saturation, and the lung sounds. And then also, we need to do is the documentation. So we need to record the amount, the, the color, the consistency, the odor of secretion. And then also, we need to document the patient's uh, pre-suctioning and post-suctioning vital signs. So that's all for